Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Adriana. I live on the east coast of Canada with my husband and two kids. And today I want to share my knitting projects over the past month. Yeah, the past four or five weeks, I think it's been. Um, I've got two finished objects and one work in progress to share with you today. First, I'll share what I'm wearing. This was a recently finished project from either last month or maybe the month before, but this is the Cinema Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. I made this with uh, using Drops Flora and Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk, both in the same like name color. I think they're both called beige, but the number for the Brushed Alpaca Silk is five, and then the number for the Flora is seven. It's just a, it's a really basic raglan sweater. Um, the only modifications I made to this sweater is, or were the, all the ribbing details I did in twisted rib instead of regular rib. That's the only modifications I made. I think I knit it to her cropped length and I've worn it a few times now that the weather is getting a little bit cooler and I'm really happy with the length of it um, in the body. I With the raglan going so deep, I've been wondering if it would be like if I'm lifting up my arms, like if it's gonna bring the sweater way up, but I've worn it for a couple days and like I don't know, done regular life stuff wearing it. And um, I haven't found it to be an issue. So I'm really happy with the cropped body length that I um, chose to knit it to. And then the other thing I had been worried about was the length of the sleeves. So I feel like sleeves are one of those things that you're like, you don't know, like it's something you don't really pay attention to maybe in um, your sweaters or your long sleeve shirts until it's time to like make a sleeve and you're like wait where is a sleeve supposed to stop is it supposed to stop like before your hand I, and I know there's like there's like a wristlet wristlet length or bracelet length and three-quarter sleeve whatever but just the, for like a regular sweater I'm like is it normal for it to stop like kind of at the base of your hand or kind of go a little bit on. I wasn't sure. And these sleeves ended up being, they go kind of like, they go kind of like, like this when I'm standing up. So most of my hand is covered just like the tips of my fingers are sticking out still. And um, I was thinking I might have to go back later and take out some of the length of the sleeve because I thought it's like one of you know like when you say a word so much you're like is this even a word like am I saying a word right now it was one of those things where I'm like looking at the sleeve so much and I'm like this looks like way too long to be a normal sleeve but then I've worn it a couple times and it's felt fine and I've been paying attention to sleeves on other sweaters that I have and a couple of like my coziest sweaters that I love for just, yeah, like spending the day at home being cozy. Um, they have sleeves that go down basically to the same length as this sleeve. So I'm, I don't think I'll have to go back in and change the length of these sleeves, which I'm very happy about because I, that intimidates me a bit to cut open a finished project that I thought I was totally done with. All that to say, I think I will just leave the sleeves as they are. If, yeah, if as I'm wearing it, they do become like bothersome, I guess I could try to go in and shorten them a bit. But as of right now, I'm, I'm not finding that they're getting in the way the length isn't getting in the way. I think the like billowiness of 
the sleeve is getting in the way more than the length. And that's just the style. Like I'm not going to, like I wanted that style. Like I wanted the big baggy sleeve. So um, yeah, I'm not going to like whip out the whole sleeve and make it narrower for that reason. I'm, I'm okay working around the baggy sleeves. But yeah, the length I think is good. Um, yeah, so that's the update on this sweater. I've worn it a few times now that the weather's getting colder. It was nine degrees this morning, nine degrees Celsius this morning, and it was glorious. I, it's amazing how much weather can affect your mood. And those few weeks of like high humidity and hot temperatures just, it was, it wasn't fun. So yeah, I'm really happy for these cooler mornings and then it heats up during the afternoon and then cools down again at night. That's like, if that's what summer was, that would be perfect. Anyway, let's get into my finished objects. First finished object is the square neck camisole. Um, designer is Helene. Okay, I've been saying, I think I've been saying it Helene, but it could be like Helene. Helene Beba. I knit this in Knitting for Olive Merino, one strand of it, Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Bottle Green. I love how this turned out. It looks so good. I used a 2.75 millimeter needle, which is one size less than what the pattern asks you to use. And I did that because I didn't have a three millimeter needle. And when I tried the 3.25 millimeter needle I had, I didn't like the way the ribbing looked. Like I didn't, it looked too gapey. So I went down to 2.75 and it's perfect. I love the way the ribbing looks. I mentioned last time that I've been having trouble with flat ribbing, um, with it looking even. I've tried combination knitting for flat knitting and I found that it doesn't make a difference. I've tried adjusting tension on flat ribbing and I found that that doesn't really make a difference. It actually makes it look worse in some case cases. And yeah, so I'm still trying to find a way to make flat ribbing look more even and neat. However, I have found a way to make the in the round ribbing. So um, all like up to here is flat on the front and back, and then you join in the round after, like at the underarm point. So all of the ribbing below this part was in the round and I I think it looks really neat. I did combination knitting. Um, I do have a link to the tutorial I followed for combination knitting for in the round. I have it linked on the project page for this, but I will put the link for it again in the description box because I did find it to like really make the ribbing a lot more even, a lot more neat. You don't get a weird like space in the last like leg of knit stitches in each column. I love how the decreases look on the side. I'll try to hold it up so you can see it better. But I think it looks so nice that the decreases incorporated like one column of knit stitches that all the decreases are like going into. I think that looks really nice. And my favorite part is the like finished edging that you do around the arms and around the neck. I'll show you the front actually. So doesn't that look so good? It just finishes it off so nicely the double knitted edging around the armholes and then the neck opening it makes it look so good up until like the end of the body I was kind of like yeah this looks good but it's I don't know obviously when you're 
when you just see like this middle strap as the strap it's like it's really thin and it looked a lot like looser like I'm like there's no way this is gonna like stay up and then you add the double knitted edging and it looks so good and it kind of pulls everything together and brings it up too and completely bra friendly and um I haven't had stretching yet. I mean, I've only worn it, I think once I've only worn it, but it hasn't stretched out so much that I'm like, oh no, like the straps are loose now. I love the color and I did, oh, I made this in the size extra large. I ended up using three skeins of the Knitting for All of Merino. I had four, but I didn't have to go into the fourth one. I did do the decreases in the pattern. You could choose to do the decreases or not. And so I chose to do the decreases, which means I used less yarn. And I think I might have knit it a little bit more cropped than what the pattern said. It ends up being like if I'm wearing high-waisted jeans, I can tuck it in a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And it's a good, good length for me. I love, I love the way it looks. And with the fingering weight, like the really thin yarn, it, it just, it looks so good. I really enjoyed the process of knitting this. I was worried that because it was fingering weight and on s small needles, I, like it would take a long time. But I think because it's a negative ease garment, it's not like you're working with like a whole bunch of extra stitches to get that positive ease. So it went by very quick. And I found that it was like, there was always something to really engage you rather than just like having the, the ribbing. Um, like you knit back and forth the front. Well, you do the straps first and then back and forth the front, back and forth the back. And then you join in the round and then you do a few rounds and then you start your decreases. After you are done your decreases, then you just knit to the length you want. So that would be the only, I guess, boring part. I also thought that the double knitted edge would take a long time, but I, I, I don't know if maybe it's because it was my first time doing it. So it was like new and exciting, but it went by really quickly for me and I loved the process of knitting this so much that I immediately cast on another one. So I have two of the square neck camisoles done. This one, of course, is much shorter. I was working with a limited amount of yarn and I used a different yarn weight for this one. This is in sport weight yarn. Let me just get the actual information for it. So this is again, the square net camisole by Helene Beba. Um, using old school acres, sport weight yarn, it's undyed, undyed black. You can see it's like brown, a brown color. I had one full skein of this color, plus a little bit from like a previous project I did that matched this color. And then I had a bit in the same, like it's undyed black, but I, I think it was probably from a different sheep um, that was slightly different in color. And I decided to do all of the double knitted edging in the different color. You can see I think I feel like you could actually see it better when I held it up like if you look at the color of the edges versus like the actual like body maybe you can see it best in the strap like the three different colors that the edge is a little bit lighter and the middle is a bit richer darker so I decided um, that I would use that slightly different color for the edges so that I could get a little bit more length. Obviously this is not 
nearly as long as this one. Let me see actually the difference. I'll hold them up together. Yeah, so this one is smaller. Also, it's more stretched out because I, I wore it yesterday. So it hasn't kind of shrunk back. The ribbing hasn't shrunk back. Um, anyway, so that was the yarn I used for this. So it's very woolly yarn. I wore it all day yesterday and didn't find it itchy on my skin. It's not like it's like the softest thing in the world, but I wasn't distracted by it. How I went about knitting this, because obviously it's not the recommended yarn. It's not the recommended yarn weight. And also I know this is sport weight yarn, but it was very thick and thin, like up to a DK in some spots and down to like a lace weight in some spots. So what I ended up doing was I found needles um, that I thought would work for it. And I started, like I cast on the, the strap. And I think I did a 3.5 millimeter needle first. And I didn't like the way it was looking. It looked too holy, too gapey. Um, I did remember from working with this yarn in the past that once you wash it, block it, it kind of puffs up a little bit and fills in those holes kind of, but it was too holy for even that, I thought. So I unraveled it all, ripped it all out and used a 3.25 millimeter needle. And what I did was knit on the 3.25, knit the first strap. And I knit it to the length of the extra large size because that's like my size for this pattern. Like that's the final dimensions of the garment. For me, what I would want it to be fits with the extra large size in the pattern. So I knit it to the length of the extra large size. And then I went and counted the rows the rows matched up with what the small size in the pattern said to do for the length of the strap. So yeah, I knit it to the length of the extra large, but the row count was the same as the small size. So using that, I knew that my row gauge at least was like pretty much bang on for the small size. Didn't know about the like stitch gauge because the strap is so thin, so you can't really measure that. But I just took my chances and knit the size small. And um, yeah, it, well, yeah, it's stretched out. So this one looks smaller, but, um, they did end up being pretty close to the same size. It fits me well. Um, and I was able to get enough length to do one full round of decreases plus a little bit extra at the end. So it's like, it's more like, um, like a sports bra length, I would say. And I really like it. I made it with the intention of like layering it under pieces. So that's what I did yesterday. It was a little bit cooler yesterday and I wore it underneath this sweater and um, yeah, it's, it kept me warm and I really like it. I wasn't sure if the difference between the two colors would be a Wednesday sweater situation where it would be noticeable, really noticeable and like look bad. I do think it's noticeable on camera. It's noticeable in person. It's not, not nearly as noticeable. Um, I think if you knew and like looked for it, then you'd see it. But if you didn't know, you wouldn't notice it. So I'm happy with how the color turned out for the edges versus the like main part of it. And again, 
love the knitting experience. I almost went out and got yarn. I was going to do another like one with the fingering weight knitting for all of yarn. Um, I almost went out like after I finished this to buy yarn to cast on another one because I love, I really do love this pattern. It fits really well. I love that the straps are nice and thick, um, especially with the sport weight. The straps are like quite thick, like compared to this one. Um, but the knitting for all of Merino is just so polished. Like it looks so good. Whereas this, because it's thicker yarn, it's just it has a little bit of a different look, right? I still like it, but let's see if I can, it doesn't want to stay up. It's the back. This is the back. Yeah, so the knitting for all of one is definitely looks more polished, professional. This one looks, I think, just a little more like homemade, but I really love it. I love the pattern. I think I will definitely make more. The sport weight one took me only two weeks start to finish because it was a thicker yarn and I knitted it a lot shorter. Plus also because I knitted a small size. Um, a lot less knitting involved. I guess I didn't really think of this, but if you have a smaller body, you have to knit less. So your projects go quicker, which is something I hadn't thought of before. So because I was using the thicker yarn, but knitting a smaller size, it went a lot quicker. And yeah, like I said, I, I knit it much more cropped than the other one. So that is, those were my two finished objects for the past month. I only have one work in progress right now and it's, it's a pretty fun update. You can see back here, I have finished the three panels for this blanket that I've been working on for close to two years now. Um, I'll put in a picture of what they all look like laid out together. I have some thoughts. First, I have to remember that when I started this journey with this blanket, I was in a very different stage of knitting experience and just like knitting knowledge than I am now. So I want to give some grace to my past self because this blanket is a, a little bit of a funny shape. Um, like it looks too long. It looks like I need to just widen it a little bit and then it would shrink up a little bit. That's what it looks like it needs needs to happen. When I was designing this blanket, I don't even know if you can call it that because I just cast on stitches and was like, I think this is good. Um, my vision for it was to be about the size of a throw blanket, but like maybe six to 10 inches longer because I, I like if I'm, if I'm, if I have a blanket on me, I like being able to like fully tuck it under my feet and then have it fully like up to my chin. And I find I can't do that with most throw blankets. I am making this blanket for my son who is a toddler right now. He's three years old. And, um, but with like the intention of him growing into it and it, I don't know, being a part of his life for a long time, I'm guessing he's going to grow to be pretty tall. So I wanted him to have a blanket that could like, yeah, <laughs> cover his whole body, I guess. So I, yeah, I knit these panels pretty long. When I started this project, I started it on like, uh, straight needles. And the reason why I decided to do panels was because my needles couldn't hold more stitches than 
the length of one of these wide panels. So that's how these panels came about. Three panels, I'm going to seam them together to make the blanket. That's the point I'm at now. Oh, I should say what yarn I'm using. I'm using Cascade Yarns Eco Plus. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. color 2445 and it's a pretty bulky yarn uh 250 grams is two no 250 grams is 437 meters so yeah it's um this is the label for it it's was a, yeah, a pretty bulky yarn and i just did seed stitch like knit one, purl one, and then do the opposite on the way back. Yeah. Now I'm at the point where I have to figure out how to join all the panels. I want to use, I have just some like undyed white yarn um, that I, I'm going to hold like two strands of it, double to make it a little bit thicker to kind of match the thickness of this yarn. Um, yeah, I'm not, I haven't done any seaming, so I'll have to look up, like, see what my options are for this. Also, these two wide panels ended up being, I, I think, the same length, almost, like, bang on the same length. That was the other thing. There's no, there's, like, a rough measurement for how long the panels were, like, pre-blocked, and, um no like row counts or anything. So this middle panel is just like a smidge longer than the other panels. And I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I think I could just make it work and uh, seam it together in a way that it like the ends line up. I think what I'll do is I'll just start seaming them and then if I get to the end and it's like oh there's like three inches left of this middle panel I can rip it out and rip back some rows and then cast it off again. I think that's what I'll do. So yeah that's the point I'm at for with this project. It's been a process. It's been a process. Um, I had a lot of momentum with it when I started it and then I like got into knitting more and got some more fun projects that weren't just like knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl the whole time so it distracted me I would put this on pause a lot but I'm happy that the knitting is finally done for it and next time you see this it will be done so excited. I don't have any knitting related acquisitions. I'm really looking forward to fall knitting. It's like I said, getting cooler and I'm starting to wear like my wool socks and my wool sweaters. And it's giving me a lot of motivation for fall knitting. That's the end of what I have to share with you today. Oh, I'm in a weird place right now that I cast this off. Like I, I bound it off, cast it off yesterday, the last panel. And so I don't have anything on my needles right now. This was always the project that was like, oh, I finished a project, I'll knit on this in between. And like, until I figure out what I wanna do next. Or, I mean, sometimes like after you've finished kind of a more intense project that requires a lot of like brain space, then you just want something easy to work on. So this was that project for me that it would be kind of like in the background in between projects. And now I don't have anything. So my needles, there's nothing on my needles, which is weird, but for the first time, in basically two years, my five millimeter needles are back in the case. They were jumping back and forth from this project to whatever project I needed. And so yeah, now they're back in their case. 
waiting for the next project. I actually was going to do another, like put the, put the stoppers on the cable stoppers, whatever on this project. So I can start another project with my five millimeter needles. And I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to finish this panel. And then my, my cord and the, or sorry, yeah, my cable and the needles will be free and I don't have to keep doing this swapping back and forth. So yeah, everything's back in its place. And I do feel a little bit weird that I don't have anything on my needles right now, but I have plans that's going to change soon. Anyway, I hope you're having a good end to your summer or winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And I will see you probably in a couple weeks with a like fall knitting plans type of video. Have a good couple weeks, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.